Good afternoon. Today we will learn new attack primitive, primitives, namely arbitrary read and write, as a more lower level attack primitives than buffer overflow attack. Then let's start with the buffer overflow example first. We have been learning buffer overflow vulnerability exploitation for five or more than seven weeks and, uh, by, and uh, in the buffer overflow vulnerability by overriding the control data such as like the overriding the return address or saved ABP, we can divert the control flow of the program from the original control flow. So the, if it is not changed, then it will return to the original return address, but we can divert uh, the control flow of the program by changing this to running uh, some other functions or shellcode or libc functions or exactv or something or wrap gadgets or we can even make a open read write function calls to read out the flag so in doing this we what we actually did is uh, like the control flow hijacking by exploiting the buffer overflow vulnerability by overriding these kind of the, the control data, for example, frame pointer and the return address, then we can change the control flow of the program. So what we are having been doing was a control flow hijacking attack uh, as a buffer overflow vulnerability as a gate of this. And uh, we have learned that uh, our attack target as changing the return address to some other functions, libc and shellcode, or to some of the wrap gadgets to set arguments uh, to achieve our purpose, either running a shell or reading the flag file with the privileged binary program. Yeah. And our attack targets uh, maybe, so the, our previous attack targets was just uh, changing the return address, but uh, our attack targets could be the return address and also the global offset table uh, by changing the addresses in the global offset table we can change the corresponding functions so we will use that to run the another function than the expected one in the program and also we can change the function pointer uh, in the program structure there are lots of function pointer in the object oriented programming and then if we can change any of that then we can change the member function call into the calling the shellcode or even exe cbe yeah. And then there is another special structure called the jump table, uh, which used in like the uh, lots of in the uh, switch case uh, statement. And then we can also change that uh, to divert the control flow uh, of the program into like some other one. And our attack. Uh, so the, to take a look at the how the PLT and GOT works in detail, so that we will mainly focus on like the overriding the global offset table uh, from now on, uh, because uh, using the arbitrary read and write, uh, what we will perform for the control flow hijacking is like uh, changing the global offset table uh, to call another function than like the uh, program expects. And to take a look at the how PLT and GOT uh, works in detail like this, then when we make a printf function call in the program, it will first call the printf in the PLT, and then the PLT will jump to the address stored into GOT, and then it will initially call a DL dynamic resolve function to find the function address in libc for the corresponding one printf, and then after finding that, it will put the address of the print template here and then make the function call. So if we can change this address, so it was the address of the print up here, but if we can change that to address of the exe CVE or system, then the printf call will actually making call to the another function, not the printf. So we will learn how to do that. So what will be then what will be the requirement, the minimal requirement for the control flow hijacking attack? So what we want to launch is control flow hijacking attack. And then the previously we link all the control flow hijacking attack to the buffer overflow vulnerability. So we are all doing like the overriding buffer, matching the stack cookie, and then change the control data to achieve the control flow hijacking. Yeah. So to launch the control flow hijacking attack actually the buffer overflow attack is not required what you need is just changing the return address so you don't have to change all the buffer stack cookie and all the thing uh, you don't need to do that what you need is changing the return address or changing the uh, saved avp yeah by just changing these two elements uh not controlling the other than like the these two elements or only one 
maybe return address, then you can change the control flow of the program, right? Yeah, so uh, we were just using the like, buffer overflow vulnerability as a gate of the vulnerability, but to have the capability for changing the return address, uh, we were using the buffer overflow vulnerability. So uh, forget about the buffer overflow vulnerability for now, then like the, what will be the minimum requirement for you to change the control flow of the, the program is like if you can have the capability of the changing the return address value, then that's it. Yeah. So what we actually need as a minimal capability is like the, if we can write some of the values to a certain address, that's called the arbitrary, right? So if we can target the return address uh, location and then just change these eight bytes for the 64 bit and then four bytes for the 32 bit, then that's enough for like the changing the control flow of this program into the something else, yeah. So this is a more fundamental attack primitives than the buffer overflow vulnerability. And then the, after the defining that, uh, we will learn the, today, we will learn the, what is uh, what are arbitrary read and write, and then its uh, characteristics, and then how we can use it for the exploitation. So we will start with the arbitrary read first. So we will think about an ideal attacker who has a capability, so-called arbitrary read. Uh, she or he can read from any address for any number of bytes. So the precondition is that the uh, attacker must know the address, uh, target address A. So for example, if the attacker knows the address of the stack, then the, something like this could be, uh, could, uh, could be allowed for, to the attacker. So for example, uh, they can set the address and then read 105, 100 bytes from there, or some other address in the code section and then read 100 bytes from there, yeah. And with this kind of the capability, can attacker break the following the security mechanisms? The answer for this is like the all maybe, uh, because uh, there is some the assumption that like we can break uh, the security mechanism with the, this kind of attack primitives because like the uh, the only requirement is that the attacker must know the target address A to leak the data. So because arbitrary read is like it reading read out some data in the program, so it's a leaking some of the data. So you can directly link this to break a stack cookie and ASRL. For stack cookie, if you can leak the cookie value, then the the you can easily defeat the uh, defense and then for ASRL, if you can leak any kind of the valid address, then you can calculate the relative offset for the the that area. Then you can get the uh, all the required address for you uh, from there. So like the uh, because like the arbitrary read can leak and break these two defenses, but the, it cannot actually run uh, some of the exploits. So because uh, uh, by just reading the thing. So it's a passive thing, so you cannot change the value, so you cannot change the return address, so you cannot achieve the control flow hijacking. But uh, this attack primitives, arbitrary read, can help bypassing all these uh, security mechanisms. So first, take a look at the how we can break the stack cookie uh, defense mechanism. So for stack cookie, let's think it as a minimal thing uh, that we need. So to break the stack cookie, what we need to know is like the value of the stack cookie itself. So if we can leak the value of the stack cookie, then the stack cookie can easily nullify it because uh, what we can do is like we can just put the same value to the cookie yeah, here and then overwrite the return address uh, when we exploit the buffer overflow vulnerability. So, so we have seen like the following code in ASR3 maybe, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure, like the uh, as you or remember or not. Yeah. So the remember the following code snippet from ASRL three challenge, and then the program will ask you about like the how many bytes uh, you want to print out from the program, and then it will write it out to the console. So you can get some of the knowledge of the program from the stack, and then this is so called the sequential read, uh, which is a. a a special type of the arbitrary read. So for the arbitrary read uh, primitives, uh, the assumption is that the attacker must know the address, target address A, but the, in case if like the attacker don't know about the address, but if there's a vulnerability, something like uh, the reading uh, 
uh, reading some more values uh, around the object, buffer object. So this vulnerability is actually the buffer over read, uh, not overflow, but uh, you can read some of the data at here uh, without the uh, without the uh, which you are uh, unallowed to the attackers at the uh, the normal case. Yeah. So the, what we can do is like the, we try to leak the cookie value and then exploit the vulnerability. So the challenge, the first challenge is sequential read one uh, that I prepared in this week will be very similar to the third three challenge. So the the challenge was is like the it will be leaking like the uh, the uh, sequence it will perform a sequential read. So like you can leak as much as you can. Yeah. And then we don't know the address A, but the, you can specify how many bytes you want to read. And then from the leak, you can easily identify where the stack cookie is, where the return address is. So you can also uh, clarify where your code addresses are. And then if you can leak a stack and heap and other address area, then you can also like calculate all the uh, relative offset for the area. So the the bypassing stack cookie is uh, easy. So if you leak the stack cookie value from the leak, then the, you can easily launch the buffer overflow attack. That's how you can uh, apply the sequential read vulnerability, uh, which is a part of the arbitrary read capability uh, to break the stack cookie. Yeah. And then like the, by doing this, uh, because it will, so if you can leak this cookie, yeah, then the uh, right next value to the cookie is like a save DVP. And then if you leak the save DVP, then you can get the address of the stack. So uh, by leaking this, uh, uh, these like the, the some of the values in the stack, you can automatically get the, some of the addresses in the stack and then some of the addresses in the code because the return address is a code address too. Yeah, so that will lead you to breaking ASRL automatically. Yeah. So the arbitrary read capability is like read anywhere if you know the address. So from the like the uh, previous example, if you have a sequential read vulnerability like this, then you can read as much as you can, and then try to figure out like a, which points are some of the uh, valid stack address in the save DVP or valid code address in the return address. Or if you have a non PIE binary then the, its code section or data sections are fixed. So the, you can start uh, leaking from the data area. And then the, you can, uh, from leaking the air addresses, so you can, uh, if you leak the, uh, what is that, the global offset table, then you can leak the address of the library. And then you can get the stack address from the this kind of the uh, save DVP information. And then if you eventually leak some of the heap pointers, then, then you can also like you get the uh, address layout of the heap locations. So arbitrary read this primitive it will be like the basing the uh, clarifying the knowledge of the attackers. So if there's any random thing or a confidential thing to the attacker, for example, where the address of the uh, exact V or like where the string of the sage or something, then you can uh, break uh, such a defense or like uh, clarify such like uh, having no knowledge about the uh, not having not enough knowledge about the exploitation uh, that can be solved with the arbitrary read capability yeah and then the, if the arbitrary uh, so the if the difference is combined with the ASRL and DEP so suppose like you think about the case that, that we have uh, all sorts of the defense stack cookie ASRL and DEP then from the leak you can easily bypass the DEP and ASRL uh, no 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 stack cookie and ASRL and then to defeat the DEP we already practiced this with the challenge raw five yeah. So if we can take a look at the any of the GOT entry of the library function, for example, if we leak the data inside of this address, then we can leak the address of the printf. Then you can calculate arbitrary function address from by getting the offset from the libc file. Then you can call any function, including uh, execv or system. Yeah. So using arbitrary read capability, yeah you can actually leak uh, the data as much as you can and then try to get the address of the library area, stack area, code area, and also you can leak the stack cookie. So after getting the function address from the G GOT, 
so you can get the address of the puts by the by using arbitrary read then you can calculate the address of the exact be or systems from puts by uh, getting in uh, by taking a look at the binary program of the libc and then you can find the libc binary or using the ldd command yeah and then after calculating all the offset you can freely call the function So the challenges for start, uh, week six start with the sequential read challenge. So the, for the first one, so this is a special one. So the program will perform a sequential read uh, from the stack for you. So you can type uh, how many bytes that the program will print out for you. But the interesting thing is like the this challenge will be very similar to ASR3 and uh, or ROB5. But the interesting thing is that uh, it has all protection enabled. For example, so the system was enabled with the ASRL, and then the program is compiled with the DEP, and then the program itself is also PIE, and then the program has a stack cookie. So you need to bypass all four yeah, defense mechanisms uh, by uh, having this one shot uh, of the uh, sequential read vulnerability. And then after that, you will have the chance to exploit the buffer overflow vulnerability, and then by just having one sequential read, uh, I believe that you can bypass all the uh, defense mechanism. So this challenge is uh, for teaching you that the arbitrary read or sequential read is very powerful uh, exploit primitives uh, that can nullify the existing defense mechanisms. And for the second one, uh, you can perform arbitrary read. Arbitrary read here means that uh, you need to specify the address. So for the sequential read, uh, you don't have to know the address. It will just uh, print out the uh, values near the object, near the buffer object on the stack. But in the second example, it will ask like the which address do you want to read? And then the interesting thing is that uh, the, the program is compiled as a, not a PIE at all. So the code and data uh, addresses are fixed. So the global offset table of the binary is fixed. So the, you can read the global offset table to leak the, the address of the functions in libc and then you can uh, call any kind of function that you want from there. So by having an offset, you can call the function. And then next is about the arbitrary write. We just run, learned that the sequential or arbitrary read primitives may nullify defense mechanisms that we have learned, such as ASRL and the stack cookie. But in actually diverting the control flow, we just reuse the uh, buffer flow vulnerability exploitation. And uh, we do not need such a vulnerability if we as an attacker has an arbitrary write capability. So arbitrary write means that uh, if we know uh, if a uh, capability that uh, for uh, like the specified address by the attacker, if they can write any number of the bytes to there, yeah then that's the arbitrary write. And then the, using the arbitrary write, uh, we can uh, launch the control flow hijacking attack. So the example of the arbitrary write capability is that uh, if the attacker specifies some of the specific address and then 100 bytes, and then also for the data, then, then they can store the data to the stack or some other section, but that they must know the address. And then the how can they achieve the control flow hijacking is very simple. So if they know the address of the return address, then they can just uh, overwrite the value of the return address to change the, uh, to change the address. And then the, it could be the uh, frame pointer value. So by specifying the address of the print pointer in the stack and then write four bytes in 32 bit and then some of the data, then you can control the same DBP, and or uh, it could be the global offset table. So you can directly override the global offset table, change the value, then whenever you make the function call, it will call another function. And how can you exploit the arbitrary write primitive to divert the program's the control flow from one to another? And an easy example of doing that is uh, overwriting global offset table and uh, using the arbitrary read vulnerability, uh, you can read the address in global offset table. So it could be anything. So for example, say uh, you leak the address of the printf. Then you can calculate the address of the system from the like uh, offset in the libc. Then you can overwrite the uh, printf got as uh, address of the system. Then later, if the program makes the function call to printf, it will call system. 
And let's see how it works as a diagram. So suppose the program makes the function call printf function call, then it will call the printf in the plt, and then it will call the function address stored in got. And this global offset table for printf should store the uh, libc address of the printf, so it will call the function. But suppose we change this uh, global offset table address of the uh, table of the printf as to store the address of the system. In that case, the program will make the function call to printf. Interesting thing is the it, it makes a function call to printf, and then it will call the printf in plt, then it will call the printf in got, then it will call system, not the printf. So the interesting thing is that the, even if the program calls printf, you can make it to call system by changing the entry of the global offset table. So for non-PIE binary, uh, so GOT addresses are all known. So you can choose any function uh, address, for example, printf. So if you have a printf function call like this, and then if you can overwrite the global offset table of the printf to change this function call to system, then it will call not printf, the program will call system this. So the, the program will actually call the system and then running the binary name writing and then all these as an argument because the you just you can just uh, switch the, this printf function call as a system function call. So in arbitrary write one challenge, so there's challenge in our in week six. So your task is to change the global offset table of the printf to a function called uh, please execute me. And then using their arbitrary write capability, you can do that. And it had the program has a printf uh, statement at the end. So if you change the printf into like a system function, then it will run the system something. Yeah. So what you need to do for the arbitrary write one, uh, you need to change the printf for the printf for got to have the address of the, this one. Then it will call this function. And for the arbitrary write two, you can change the uh, printf. We can replace the printf function call into system function call by changing the value of the got of the printf in the uh, program into the system's function address. Then it, instead of the calling printf, it will call system function. And then using the path and the some other trick, you can make a, this writing to run your own sh or some other program. So today we learned the two new exploit primitives, arbitrary read and write, and then having arbitrary read is essential to avoiding uh, avoid uh, defense mechanisms such as ASRL and stack cookie, and having arbitrary write is essential to divert the program's control flow from one to another, such as jumping to shellcode or run exec.v. So we just summarize that the, the what we learned for the the return uh, uh, the address overriding using the buffer overflow vulnerability and also breaking stack cookie and the ASRL that we learned as a just summarize that uh, we just summarized the uh, uh, both of them as a arbitrary read and write. So the what we were running is some sort of the arbitrary read and write. Yeah. So like some of the leaks that you experienced in like breaking the ASRL and the stack cookie, those are like the somewhat similar to uh, somewhat based on the arbitrary read or sequential read capability. And then the buffer overflow attacks and then the attacks that you can change the value of the return address or global offset table. Yeah, these are like coming from the arbitrary write. And in the coming lectures, uh, we will learn uh, why arbitrary read and write are important uh, with the example of the real vulnerability called the format string vulnerabilities, because like the, these two uh, primitives, arbitrary read and write, uh, are basis of the most of the modern exploits. Uh, and then like a format string vulnerability is like the, one of the good examples to demonstrate like the, how we can be used uh, wisely to achieve the uh, sophisticated uh, exploitation. Thank you. And then today we will have a tutorial for the uh, solving the sequential read and arbitrary read and then arbitrary write challenges.